In this video, we're gonna take a look at Legends of Andor, an adventure board game for two to four players that you can also play solo. If you are itching to set off for a new adventure, then you have five nice legends just waiting for you in this game. So take my hand and follow me into the world of Andor. Let me get this game set up on the table and let me show you how to play Legends of Andor. This is Legends of Andor. This game is based on five adventures that in the game are called Legends. These are the Legends of Andor. At the start of the game you will play Legend number one, which is a sort of a tutorial for new players. Then you will play Legend number two, then Legend number three, and Legend number four. This is the penultimate legend before the big finale, that is the Legend number five. The fifth legend will pit you against the mighty dragon that you see right there on the board at the foot of the mountain. So Legends of Under is like a long epic journey that is based on five adventures, five legends in total. And every one of these legends is made up of a bunch of cards. These ones here, for example, are the cards for the fifth legend. And you find letters on these cards, okay? These will tell you what will happen in the story and you will reveal these cards following the alphabetical order starting with the first letter that is the letter A. You may have multiple cards for the same letter, you reveal all of these cards and then you read uh, and follow the instructions that are printed here on these cards. These cards will also tell you about the objectives for the adventure that you are about to start. Okay? Then as you play through the adventure then these cards will also be revealed and you will have to uh, follow the, um, the instructions that are printed also on these cards. So, little by little the story will unfold as you play through the uh, adventure and as you reveal these cards here. Eventually you will reach the final card in the story that is represented by the final letter, letter N, and when you reveal this card, the legend is over. A legend can end only in one of two ways. If you complete the legend successfully, you can read from the blue box. If you fail the legend, you will read from the red box. And the text here will just tell you that you played a shitty game, that you were terrible, that you must play again. I know it's pretty frustrating to read from a red box, because that means that you lost and you don't want to lose for sure. Now, there are other special cards in this game. These cards here, for example, don't have letters on them, but illustrations. And these cards will um, introduce new special um, characters to the game. Some of these cards will also trigger some special events. So these cards work a little bit different from the other cards that I showed you before, but they're really important for the story that you are playing. So, like I said before, you will play until you reach the final letter, the letter N. And that, in other words, means that, you see, that piece right there will move on this track from letter A to letter N that is actually up there. When this piece here reaches the letter N the game is over. And in some legends it is possible for the final letter to come down this track and get closer here to the letter A. In that case, like we do have here, uh, there is a, short dist a shorter distance here between the starting letter and the final letter. That means that you will have less time to complete the uh, legend. Uh, and yes, in this game you don't really have much time. You must 
uh, complete the uh, the legend before you run out run out of time and you don't really have much time at your disposal you cannot linger around there on the board fight all the monsters there won't be enough time to do that you want to stick to the legend complete your objectives and then be done with the adventure let's take a look down here at the characters that are included in this game you see these are all the four playable characters that come in legends of andor I decided to play this final adventure with a full party and this is my adventure party. Right there we've got the wizard, this is the warrior, the dwarf and the archer. These are the four character boards for the four uh, characters, for the four uh, players, okay? And so each player will pick a character and will play with that character. Here for example we've got the warrior and when you pick a character you can choose whether you want to play with the female version of your hero or the male version and that depends on whether you want to be a man or a woman in your adventure and here for example we have a female warrior on this character board you find the strength for your hero and you see the warrior has got 12 strength points she has become very powerful and down here you've got your life total all the characters start with seven life then uh, the players will gain more life. Players may also lose all of their life points. In that case, you reach zero life. When the character reaches zero life, the character is exhausted. That doesn't mean that you are dead, because you never technically die in this game. When you reach zero life, you gain a boost of free life that keeps you in the game. But life is very important because it determines the number of dice that you will roll during the combat phase. With just free life, the warrior will roll just two dice during the combat phase, but with 10 life, the warrior will roll three dice and not just two. And that is a lot better. Your life points are also very important because you can spend them to take extra actions during your turn. So this is a very important resource that you want to use very wisely during the game. Life is really important and you run out of life very quickly. Then over here, we've got room for our loot and our equipment. These three squares here is where you will place the objects that you are able to collect during the adventure. And on your hero, you will place your equipment. You can equip your character with a bow that allows you to attack monsters at a distance, or you can use a helmet on your character that will make your character a little bit more powerful during the combat phase. Down here, we've got a dwarf equipped with a shield, and the shield gives you some extra protection against some nasty things that can happen in the game. Over here instead we have the archer with these three powerful rune stones. These three objects here, these are the three precious rune stones. If you collect three rune stones of three different colors, they give you access to the mighty black die. This die is really powerful because you see there are some very high numbers printed on this die. And you can roll this die against your enemies, against the monsters. Uh, so when you roll this die here, that gives you a sensation of real power because this die here is really, really good against monsters. But you can use that uh, die only if you uh, possess three runestones of three different colors. And you see, they take up all of your space on the character board. So these are the four characters in the game. And yes, I have to say that they're all pretty much the same, there's only one thing that differentiates these characters from one another and that is their special ability. And based on that, I will say that the best character in the game is the wizard over there. Because the wizard has got a very useful ability that allows you to manipulate your die. Uh, and by the way, you see all the characters roll dice of different colors. The, uh, the wizard rolls this purple die. And if you roll, for example, a 2, using the special ability of the wizard, you can turn that into a 5. If you roll a 1, you can turn that into a 6. So you always get very high results. And, you know, the higher you roll, the better it is. That is a universal truth in the world of board gaming, right? This is why I think the wizard is really the most powerful character of these four characters. Uh, the best character in the game, in my opinion. All right, let's now talk about the monsters that populate the world of Andor. In this game, you'll be fighting Gauls. They are the tiniest creatures in the land of Andor. They look almost like goblins. Then in this game, you will also be fighting Skrulls. The other two creatures you see right there. 
they are a lot more powerful. And you will also be fighting trolls. You see it right there, we've got a group of trolls that is marching on the castle. Uh, when you see these many trolls together marching on the castle, that is really bad news for you because the trolls are really, really tough. They are the uh, toughest creatures in the game. In the Land of Under, we also find this type of creature here. This is called a Wardrug. This is a big cat, a big feline that is also pretty powerful, but this creature is especially fast. It can cover twice uh, the same distance as the other creatures. So, all the monsters will be moving across the board following the arrows that are printed right there on the board. And you see those little arrows right there, they will take the monsters closer to the castle's gates. One of the main things you'll be doing in this game is protect the castle from the invasion of these monsters. If you let too many monsters through the castle's gates, then the castle is overrun, you lose the castle, you lose the game. All the monsters move according to the order that we find in that rectangle up there. First you move all the gores, then all the scrolls, then all the wardrugs, then the trolls, and then you move all the wardrugs again. So you see, wardrugs move twice, and they cover a greater distance on the board than all the other creatures. This movement takes place only at the beginning of a new day, at the dawn of a new day. A day in the game is made up of a total of seven hours, but players may decide to keep playing through the night. They can take up to three extra hours during night time, uh, when it's really dark and all the creatures are just lurking about, Every hour that they spend during the night will cost the player two uh, life points. This is why I told you before that life is really important, because if you want to wander around during the night, you will have to spend some of your precious life points. So you will keep track of the hours that you take by moving the token corresponding to the color of your character on that track right there. When you decide to call it a day, you uh, take your token and you place it back into that rectangle. Once all the players have done that, then all the monsters will move on the board. Then a new dawn will break and a new day will begin. And then, of course, if you are playing the final legend in the game, you also have the mighty dragon right there on the board. And yes, uh, even though that Dragon is just cardboard. It looks pretty fearsome to me. I really like it. It's it's a little bit of a shame that this dragon appears only in the final legend, and, and I quite like this final confrontation with the dragon. Now, if you squeeze your eyes, you may be able to see also the standees for my characters. You can see the warrior there wielding the sword, the wizard with his magical stuff, and all the other characters here of my adventure party, they're all gathered behind the dragon, because this is a cooperative game. You need to team up and cooperate to be able to take down the, uh, the, the toughest creatures, the toughest um, monsters that populate this world. And of course, you need to be all together to uh, be able to defeat the mighty dragon. Now, the dragon attacks you with three black dice. And remember what I told you about these dice here, they are really, really powerful. But of course, you can combine the strength points of all of the characters in your party, and that should be enough to make this final battle uh, even, to make this an even battle. I have to say that I find this game to be a lot easier if you play with more characters in your party, if you include three characters or all the four characters in your party, then at that point the game is easier. If you want to play this game in a very hard mode, then try to play with just two characters. That is a lot more difficult, in my opinion. Uh, then you may also get some extra help from some other characters in this game. For example, we've got these dudes here. They 
are the dwarfs. You see, this is a band of dwarfs. You uh, can uh, have these guys join your party and they give you plus four attack. There's also a prince that you can uh, call to your aid and the prince, this, uh, this guy here is called Prince Thorold and is one of the ma main characters in this game and this guy, just like the band of dwarves, gives you a plus four attack modifier to your uh, total uh, attack power against the, the monsters and against the dragon. So you can also use this extra help from these characters that you find right there on the board, just like the witch that is up there. You see, that is the standee of the witch. The witch will give you potions, and you can purchase a potion from the witch, and you can drink half of the potion, and you see, uh, with half of the potion, you will be able to double the result of your die. And, and that also comes in handy against a powerful monster like the dragon. Oh, and before we are done here, I would like to give you a sneak peek of the reverse side of the board, where we got a second beautiful illustration that is used only in one of the five legends in the game. You use this other side of the board just for the fourth legend. In that legend, you will delve into the underbelly of the mountain, you will explore the mine, and you will retrieve these precious gemstones here uh, that are worth a lot of gold, which are scattered all over the mine. I really like this fourth legend because it is different from the rest of the game. It is really like a dungeon crawling experience. It, it reminded me of my first days playing Dungeons and Dragons with the Black Box Edition. I remember that was a lot of fun. And when you play this legend, you will need this item here. Just remember my words, you will need this item when you play this uh, fourth legend. It's just so important. Okay, I don't want to spoil the experience too much for you, I just wanted to let you know that there's also this other side of the board that you use only in the fourth legend. So you see, this game is really full of surprises. Legends of Under is based on five adventures, or legends, that are of an increasingly higher level of difficulty. At the start, the game does pretty well at breaking down the basics uh, and the core mechanics with the first introductory legend that works as a sort of a tutorial that takes you through the basics of the game. Then, the game manages to keep you interested and motivated to play by adding new elements to the gameplay. So the game gradually evolves and becomes more varied, and you also become a better player. You learn new ways to play the game, and uh, you also learn how to use your resources more, wi uh, more wisely. So, you gradually develop a sound grasp on the game, the rules, and the world of Under. And eventually, you will find yourself up against the mighty dragon in the final legend, the fifth legend, and that is really the climax of the game, the epic confrontation with the mighty dragon in the final legend. Because we all know it, a fire-breathing dragon is always the final stage in an, in an epic adventure. The final legend is, in my opinion, the most epic legend in the game. Uh, because for the final legend, all the pieces of the game come into play. All the monsters are thrown onto the board, including the dragon, uh, that appears on the board only in the final adventure, in the final legend. I think... This game is pretty pretty nice, uh, it's also fairly long, it is based on just five legends, but these five legends take up a lot of time, and that is because, let's face it, you will fail in this game, and you will fail many times, that is inevitable, especially early on in the game. Just don't expect that you can breeze through a legend at the first attempt, that will not happen. Legends of Under plays out like a puzzle or a riddle in which you have to take some very important decisions under the pressure of a story advancing relentlessly. 
In this game, time is your greatest enemy. Everything you do in the game will cost you time. Fighting a monster will cost you time. And if you roll very poorly during the combat phase, then it will cost you even more time to take out that creature, which can make your adventure go awry. I like this game because it's really challenging, also because you can really feel that pressure of the story coming to an end, and that, that pressure is on your shoulders. Uh, and, and then I also really like this game because it covers most of the aspects of your typical fantasy adventure, and it presents all of these aspects in a very nice, very neat way, combining mechanics that um, we rarely find together in the same game. It's, it's a very nice game, in my opinion. For, for that reason, it's also a fairly special game. And I also feel kind of nostalgic about this game, uh, because Legends of Under evokes some of the early RPGs that I played uh, many years ago, when I was a lot younger. Um, so yes, I, I really like it. I really like Legends of Under. I like playing this game quite a bit. However, I have to say that I was expecting a lot more from the story. Uh, the story in the game is a little bit too generic. It is a nice fantasy adventure, but a little bit too generic. Also, replayability for this game is an issue, because once you're done with a legend, you just don't want to play that legend again. Because remember what I said, it will take a while to complete a legend. And once you're done with it, you just want to forget about it, you want to move on to, uh, with the story, and you don't want to play it again. Um, so yes, Legends of Under is a wonderful game for solo players, and in fact, I play this game just solo. And when you're playing solo, you have to control at least two characters in your adventure party. But you can easily control all of the four characters in your party with just a little experience. And then, with the right people, I think this game can be a very nice cooperative adventure board game. I'm gonna give this game a pretty good grade. I'm gonna give Legends of Under an 8 out of 10. I think that if you are a fan of adventure board games, then you cannot miss out on this game. I love this genre, I love these uh, type of games here, I, I, I really like them, I want to try them all, so for me this game here is a must play. Legends of Under is a must play for all the fans of adventure board games out there.